prepared uh, a little bit of bread and wine or grape juice and again invite you to light a candle uh, symbolizing the presence of the Holy Spirit with us in this time of word and sacrament. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And I heard you say, and also with you. Our scripture readings for this Sunday uh, first come from the New Testament book of a letter of James, the first chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. Blessed is anyone who endures temptation. Such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. No one, when tempted, should say, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and God himself tempts no one. But one is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. Then, when that desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin, and that sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to to death. Do not be deceived, my beloved. Every generous act of giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then our gospel reading today from Luke's gospel, the 22nd chapter. And uh, this comes to us uh, in the midst of uh, Jesus' final hours uh, with his disciples before his crucifixion. Luke 22, beginning uh, at verse 28. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on the thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. But Jesus said to Peter, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So today is our uh, final uh, part of our four-week series uh, on the Lord's Prayer. And today we're focusing on the final petitions, the sixth and seventh petitions, save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Now, last week we concentrated on uh, two words, thanksgiving and grace. Thanksgiving is all about remembering all the ways in which God continues to provide daily bread for us. And grace is all about remembering how God graciously forgives and gives to us the gift of God's grace and forgiveness. Therefore, we are also called to live lives 
that witness God's grace and forgiveness to others. And so now today, as we move on to the last two petitions of the Lord's Prayer, the word for today is trust. Whom do we trust uh, to be the one we go to when life would seem to uh, seek to destroy us? Whom do we trust when we come to the end of our rope and realize that we are in a situation in life that we are powerless to control. I just had a conversation last night with uh, our neighbor. Um, they have uh, lived across uh, the sidewalk from our uh, uh, condominium in our complex, uh, but now that they've uh, put their uh, home on the market, uh, last night was the first time an opportunity presented itself for me uh, to actually have conversation uh, with the husband. How many of us really know our neighbors these days? And it's amazing what we can learn. So last night I discovered uh, that my neighbor, uh, as he was willing to share with me, has he shared that he has been uh, alcohol free for 22 years. Uh, had it not been for AA, uh, he admits that he would probably be dead by now. Part of the power of AA is simply the truth of admitting that in certain areas of our life we have lost control or we are powerless to save ourselves. We need an intervention. We need a community to support us. We need friends who hold us to a radical honesty about ourselves and our need for strength beyond our ability to handle certain situations. And that's also the strength and power that we recognize when we pray in the Lord's Prayer. Um, save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Some things are just bigger than we are. Some things have the potential uh, to take over our lives. Some things have the ability to put us in bondage and take life from us. Martin Luther, in his uh, small catechism, uh, gives classic definition uh, to these things that have the power to overtake and destroy life for us. And he names the three as human sin, the presence of evil in our world, and the fear of death. Yet, uh, these are the very same places where God promises to meet us places where God promises to meet us uh, with God's strength, with God's power, with God's mercy and love. Uh, I love the passage uh, from Luke's Gospel today where uh, Jesus says to Peter, knowing full well that within a few hours uh, Peter will have denied him three times. But Jesus says to Peter, Satan has demanded to sift all of you disciples like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. Isn't it wonderful to, to think that our Lord is actually praying for us, his followers? Is actually intervening on our behalf? is through the power of the Holy Spirit, as we hear in Paul's letter to the Romans, praying with sighs too deep for words. And that's what we're praying for uh, in these final two petitions of the Lord's Prayer. That when we enter into a time of trial, those trials of life that are sure to come, that when we enter into uh, a time of trial, we pray that our Lord 
may intervene for us. That the Holy Spirit would empower us. Uh, pray that our, uh, when our strength fails, uh, we trust a stronger power to see us through. To give us a new possibility of hope to bring us to the joy of knowing that we are embraced by a love that is more powerful than any despair, any fear, any sense of helplessness. Save us from the time of trial. Peter, I have prayed for you that your faith not fail you. And deliver us from evil. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Such is the assurance that Jesus would have us know. Such is the assurance that faith uh, tested by adversity knows. Uh, such is the assurance that St. Paul uh, speaks of in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, where Paul says, no testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and God will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, God will also provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. The ending of the Lord's Prayer, then, is all about trust. And our trust that through the death and resurrection of Jesus, we have the assurance that God meets us in those places and that God's divine good regard for us, his grace for us, meets us in those moments. And that through the power of the Holy Spirit in our baptism, we have been joined to Christ in God's gift of eternal life. And that such divine mercy and grace is available to us as we direct our prayers to God in trust. To which Luther uh, says we direct our Amen. Amen meaning it shall be so. Because God has promised it. Amen because we trust it to be true for us. Amen. Because even in those times when God seems silent, the power of Christ's cross and resurrection are more powerful still. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen and amen and amen. In Jesus' name. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Group hug. In the night in which he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And as Jesus has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.